What is up you guys welcome back to the channel so check this out today this is gonna be part two of how to test a relay but this time we're gonna be working on the car and we're not gonna be doing that on the bench now to be honest with you I honestly don't think that in my 10 years plus of fixing cars I've never ever ever seen an automotive tech or a mechanic take a relay out of a car take it to the bench connect it to a battery source and test it that way all of the testing is done at the car and everything can be done at the relay base with a simple test light or a simple voltmeter so let me go over to the car and let me show you how to test a relay circuit let's go okay the very first thing you got to do is find your fuse box in this case my fuse box is right next to my battery so that's very convenient for me to do all my testing here the good thing about this one is that everything's labeled for me. I got the starter relay, the AC relay, the auto shutdown, the horn, the EATX, the MTV, the fuel pump relay, and I got a radiator fan relay. So for today's testing, we're gonna be using the radiator fan relay, and we're gonna be testing our powers, our grounds, our control sides, and we're gonna be bypassing the relay, and I'm gonna show you how to do all that from the relay base. Get a test light that doesn't draw too many amps because we're gonna be getting, we're gonna be testing computer control circuits. And if you get one that draws a lot of amperage, one that has like a dome light in it or a, or a headlight, you there is a possibility that you will burn the PCM up, and that's gonna cost you. I'm gonna put a link below in the description to where you can get one of these. Um, and if you want to get one, just click on the link below. It'll take you directly to Amazon, and you can buy it from there. It'll help me out. It's gonna help you out. And let's move on. The very first thing I'm going to do is take my alligator clip and connect it to battery negative. Now this is just basic stuff, okay? Take your test light and check it on battery positive to make sure that you have a good ground. And as you can see the light is lighting so I got a good ground right there. I got a good power here. So uh, I'm going to take my relay out and see where I have a good power. And you can see right here on this pin. I got a good power source so directly across from it I should have a good ground which comes from the fan so let me switch my test light clip over to battery positive and I should have a good ground on that clip and I do have a good ground now the reason that took a little while to light is because it's going through two of those fans and that's a lot of resistance in those fans so it takes a while to find a good ground but I got a good ground there so that tells me that my fans are intact if I use a voltmeter I can check the resistance at this pin and that'll tell me the resistance of those windings on the fans so I got a good power feed and I got a good circuit at the fans I should have a power feed on one of the other pins with the key on so let me leave it in one of the pins and when I turn the key on I should have another power feed okay key is on and I've got nothing there there it is so that's my other power feed so with the key on I have two power feeds one that's there all the time that's on the load side and I got a power feed on the control side so that means that these fans will not turn on unless the key is in the on position that's how this circuit works now on this side I should have a ground so let me switch my test light over to battery positive right now there's no ground because there's nothing commanding the relay on but if I command my AC on I'm pretty sure that, that that'll send a ground to the relay to turn on the fans because as you know the fans come on when you turn your AC on so let me turn on the uh, let me turn on the AC and see if we get a good ground here with our test light running you can see I got a good ground here and I got a good ground coming from the fans so this relay should activate when I turn my AC on so let me put the let me put the relay inside and you should hear a click all right now that you determined which is the load side and which is your control side and on this one we determined that our load side 
was the two pins that are perpendicular to each other and I showed you that in the first video so if you haven't seen it go ahead and watch it I'm going to put a link to it up here so you can watch the first video and understand how to determine load side and control side but now that we determine the load side you can simply take a jumper wire something like this just a small piece of wire you can put it across terminals 30 and 87 and you should hear the fans activate So that's one way to do it. If you are not sure of which terminals to jump with the jumper wire, okay, something small, it doesn't have to be too big, you can even use a paper clip, you can even use a pair of pliers, anything that conducts electricity, let me show you, just stick the pair of pliers in there, now you don't want to jam them in there, but hold it and listen. the relay with anything that conducts electricity that's going straight from this power feed that we checked in the beginning out to the fence now if you're not sure of which wires to jump where what pins to use which pin is which then go back and go back and watch the first video but if you're not sure of which wires to jump then take a relay like this without the cover on there like I showed you in the first video and all you're gonna do is put this relay in place of the other one and you're gonna you're gonna make the contacts you're gonna bypass the relay by uh, doing this with the contacts. You're pretty much gonna push the contact to the other side and that's gonna bypass the relay from pin 30 to 87. So let me put this in there and I'll show you that test. Just hold it. And there it is. Three ways you can bypass the relay, pretty much that tells you that the load side is in good condition. So if you have your fans that aren't working, now you got to test the power feed to the control side and the control that is either coming from the computer or a module or whatever it is. So pretty much this relay base right here, think of it like a four-way intersection. Okay, so you got a power feed here coming from this way, you got a ground coming from this way, you got another power feed coming from this way, and you got another ground coming from this way. So it's a four-way intersection, and you got to decide which way do you go. Do you have power feed coming in? Do you have a power feed missing? Do you have a ground missing? Or do you have a control missing? You can figure that out from the relay base right here. You can also use a multimeter to do the bypass test. You just got to put it on amps. And you got to put this wire over to the amp, to the A-hole, okay? And then you can use these leads as jumper wires. But the problem here is that this multimeter is only protected by a 10 amp fuse. If you look at the schematic on the fuse box, you can see that the radiator fan is protected by a 30 amp fuse. So that fan draws a lot more than 10 amps. So I won't be able to show you the bypass test with the multimeter. But if you have a circuit that draws 10 amps or less, you can do that test with the multimeter and you'll be able to see how much amperage your load is drawing. All right, I'm gonna show you one more example with the 10 amp fuse. You can see right here, fuse, um, fuse 22 is a 10 amp fuse and that's for my AC clutch. The AC clutch relay is over here, and that's this one right here. So I'm going to use that one with my ammeter. I'm going to take this relay off. Now I have my key on inside. My test light is connected to battery negative. So I got to find the power feeds. That's one power feed right there. And that's another power feed, okay? Now, looking at the relay, I can see which terminals is which. Okay, so you can see that pin 30 and 87 are diagonal from each other and 85 and 86 are also diagonal from each other. So, looking at the relay base, if this relay goes in here like this, now you got to pay attention when you're reading the relay because you're flipping it over upside down. Okay, so pin 30 is this one on my uh, top left, but when I flip it over, it's actually the bottom right. So pin 30 which is our power feed is this one so to test my AC clutch I gotta go diagonally from it so this will be pin 87 now if I switch my test light to battery positive I should have a ground there and I do 
This is a ground, and this should also be a ground, but when the AC, that's for the control side. Okay, so this one is my ground to the clutch. So if I go to this terminal here at the ground to the clutch, I can bypass it using my ammeter. So I have my ammeter set on amps. I'll switch it over. I'm gonna leave it right there so you guys can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the black lead on pin 30, which is our power feed. And I'm gonna use my red lead on pin 87, which goes to the clutch. And you should hear the clutch activate. Now if you look at the voltmeter, at the multimeter, it says 2.8 amps. So that clutch is drawing 2.8 amps of current. Okay, now I'm just going across pin 30 and 87. So that's another way to do it with the ammeter. Uh, I know I ran through this, but if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments section below. Um, that's pretty much it for testing relays at the base. Again, the easiest way to think of this is like a four-way intersection and two circuits coming in at that intersection, okay? So you got a control side and a load side and now from testing at the relay base, you can go in any direction depending on what you're missing at the relay. All right guys, so that right there just about covers testing the whole relay circuit, testing your powers, testing your grounds, your continuity to your load, making sure that you have a good ground at the pin 87 or pin 30, whichever one goes out to your load, right? Remember, the easiest way to think of it is like a four-way intersection, and then you gotta figure out what are you missing. Are you missing one of your powers? Are you missing your control? And then from there you decide and attack that way, or you attack this way. Very, very basic. You, get, you can do all of this testing without even having a wiring diagram. That's the cool thing about this. Now, granted, some circuits do require wiring diagrams because they do get a little bit more complicated, but all that thing, all that comes with experience and all that comes with time. And your basic relay circuit doesn't require a lot of testing, doesn't require a lot of tools. Remember, you can test, you can bypass the relay having just anything that conducts electricity and that about covers it. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to leave the video a like and drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think and let me know what else you guys want to see. I'll make that happen for you guys. And that's it. I'm out of here. Peace out, guys.